Hey, 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 closet busters and bold move makers. It is time once again for Life Uncloset. So I want you to gather around because it is time once again to kick down those closet doors of your life. We're here to escape our BS, explore our fears, and elevate our self-expression. I'm your host, Rick Clemens. I'm the bold move expert and that coming out guy who's going to take you to the party, the pulpit, the wake, and back to the party of living your life uncloseted. So come on along with me and grab hold of yourself and get ready to step out, step up, and step into facing your fears, making your bold moves, and living life without apologies. Now let's get to the show. Hey, 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 Life Uncloseted family. It is time once again to make those bold moves, come out of those closets of our life, and see what we can do to live an apologetic life. I'm your host, Rick Clemens, and let me tell you something I've learned through all the different journeys of my life, but especially coming out of the closet and pursuing different things is sometimes the best way to get through anything is to invoke the deepest sense of self-care. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, and I know you guys have all heard this, if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be a damn bit of good to anybody else. And sometimes just giving yourself that space will truly help you be your very, very best and be able to live your life without apologies. And I'm bringing somebody onto the podcast that I can tell you his story will teach you so much about what it really truly means to be in a space of self-care, the amazing things that he did after he had a pretty big tragedy in his life and how he's taken this and truly turned it into his life calling, everything from inspiring others to do big major things, everything from weight loss and walking through some big deep tragedies to helping them handle grief. And he's just a really soulful guy. He's a guy I've gotten to know a little bit over the years and I just truly appreciate what he brings to the world to make the world a better place. And so let's just dive in. Welcome to the show, Dave Connolly. So how you doing, Thank, man? Good. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate being on. So you and I have both been through some pretty big stuff in life here. <laughs> Right. And uh, <laughs> not only big stuff physically as well as right. um, big stuff life wise. And um, I'm still kind of a big guy, but I think, um, you know, what's interesting is we both have been in that space where, you know, we let our bodies just like go completely out of check. Yeah. And both of us, that was hinged on really some big life tragedies that came forward. I know for me, I kind of buried my truth behind my weight and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then I came out of the closet and gosh, I wish I had that magic wand still. It's like, okay, poof, you're skinny, you know, okay, just kind of. <laughs> oh, but you do, Rick, you do. I know all I do. All inside you. <laughs> I know I do. And that's what we're going to get into. But uh, <laughs> before we just keep talking around circles around this, let's kind of bring the listeners into the context of this story of yours because mm. it's powerful, it's moving, and um, it really did start you on a journey to where you are today, not only physically, but doing work you really love. So um, I'm going to let you just paint the story for the listeners right now. Oh, thank you. Um, so I, this, this phase of my life, this part of my life, and I say it that way because we live so many different lives over the course of our life. And, and I, I'm finding that as I get older, that it's, it's the space in between that is so interesting to me, the, the transitions. And sometimes it's, it's around, you know, like big birthdays and sometimes it's around big events, mm -hmm. but the magic of life isn't so much like, you know, you hear like the, it's not the, it's not the destinations. It's, it's the, it's the journey. And I'm like, you know what? That's not, that's not hokey. That's not hack. Yeah. That's not, you know, that's, that's for right. real. It really is mm -hmm. the journey. And that's what makes life so magic. Um, and you know, for me, I was, um, I was in a pretty stalled space. I was really stuck. I was, um, I was a senior technology executive, uh, and I just, I, I, I hated my job. I dreaded it. Uh, I, I smoked a pack of cigarettes a day and mm -hmm. I weighed 330 pounds. Mm -hmm. And the one real joy in my life, uh, was my wife, Carol. Uh, we, uh, at five months, five months after we met, uh, we got married. It was so mm. impulsive. Uh, we didn't tell our families for almost a year. <laughs> wow. And uh, 13 years later, I, my favorite person, absolutely my favorite person. And one day she was just on that couch sick. Uh, and that was unusual uh, because uh, Carol, one of those people that, um, 
you know, when, when they're sick, they're still in motion, just a, you know, like a little bit sure. slower, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I got back from that job that I hated and uh, she was still on the couch and I called up a friend and the friend said, Hey, you know what? She might be having something seriously wrong. Why don't you get her to the hospital? Mm -hmm. Got to the hospital and you know, like everything was sort of, you know, okay. Right. You know, surprisingly, um, but she was having trouble breathing. And so they put a, 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 a tube in her to help uh, drain her lungs. Yep. God, I fell asleep beside her in the bed that night. It's amazing. And, but I woke to just alarms going off and them rushing her gurney down the hallway. Hmm. I think, um, you know, doctors, doctors aren't allowed to apologize. Hmm. Um, and it's, it's not because they don't care. It's not because they're not sorry. It's for uh, insurance liability yep. reasons. And the doctor comes up to me and she says, I'm sorry. It's like, oh. Yeah. I, when they, they put the tube in her, it started a series of, of a cascade of, of um, events that uh, aggravated psoriasis, which is, I mean, it looks like scaliness around right, your joints, right. you know, but it's actually autoimmune. It's not fatal. Um, it's not contagious. It's just more annoying than anything else. Mm -hmm. And it just started a cascade of events where her um, blood started clotting and, um, and she had a stroke and then another and then another. And mm -hmm. um, three days later, I turned off the life support. Wow. <sighs> Big stuff. I know what it's like to die of a broken heart. Mm-hmm. So my world just stopped. You know, I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. I couldn't sleep. Just everything stopped. Um, it was, there's this, there's this, this, <laughs> my, my friend, um, my best friend from, from uh, my childhood came over. I don't even know how many days had really passed. I think it was after the funeral and he literally had to pick me up off the floor. And say, look, you know, we're going to give you your three S's. My Australian, my Australian friends <laughs> called the shave, the shower, and the shit. We're going to get you up and out of here. Right. And he just gotten his pilot's license, right? And you know, to keep your pilot's license, they have to go up and tool around the plane, um, right. you know, pretty regularly. So he takes me up, and it's this beautiful day outside of DC. And um, he said, "Look," he just kind of looks at me. He says, "Look." You know, uh, there's like one thing that they drill into us over and over again, just like every time we go up, every time we're on the ground, every time we talk, it's like the one thing that they drill into us over and over again is when we, when you think that you're going to crash and die, when you mm -hmm. are certain that this plane is going to go straight into the ground, the one thing that they, they teach you to do is to let go of the stick mm. and don't fight it so fucking hard it, because a plane is meant to fly. And that became a metaphor for my life because at that moment I was like, oh, stop trying to control this so hard. Stop trying to fight this so hard. Just let go. Your life is meant to fly. Mm. This living thing is automatic. You are supposed to. And it's really strong. And I still couldn't eat. I still couldn't sleep. I still couldn't uh, do like the normal things of life, but I could choose to drink some water. Mm. I had to, right? You right. Know, I had to. And I, I had, I mean, I have one now. Like I, I always have a water bottle on me. If you, if, if yep. when we meet in person, if I don't have a water bottle within like, like, like reaching distance of me, you know that something's wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I always have a water bottle with me. And that was like the smallest bit of self-care. It was the smallest bit of self-care because what I was beginning to learn and where I am today and what I work with my clients on today as a health and wellness coach mm -hmm. is really learning to love yourself as much as you love others and maybe more. I was learning to love myself as much as I loved Carol. Mm. And that is my work. That's my life's calling. That's my mm. journey. And that's where it began was loving myself. And that was self care. That's what you do when you love yourself. You take care of yourself. Yeah. And I think this is, it's important for everybody to hear this, but I think it's very important for men to hear this a lot. Women seem to dial into this and they know that they intuitively should do this. Now, doesn't mean they always do. Yeah. 
but I think men, because of who we're quote supposed to be, mm-hmm. we don't do this enough. And I'm not talking about getting your ass to the gym. I'm not talking about eating right. Yes, those are pieces of the puzzle. I'm talking about allowing yourself to feel vulnerable. I'm talking about letting yourself grieve. I'm talking about letting yourself go into some scary spaces yeah. and find yourself. Yeah. And this is the stuff that so many guys don't do. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly, quite honestly, they wonder why they're so fucked up. Right. Exactly. Um, I, I, I just, I'm, I, I'm just sitting here nodding. I, yeah, I know that doesn't work well. No, he is. I mean, I'm sitting here nodding. Trust us. We can see each other. Y'all can't see us. <laughs> he looks really good. I'm like in my gym clothes still going, I, was, I just got my fat ass back from the gym to do this, but, um, perfect, it, perfect. Self-care. it's so interesting. Yes. It, the self-care is so interesting. In fact, um, I've noticed as I'm working on a speech right now that, I've shifted how I do this to where the self-care that I'm giving myself around this particular talk is much more intense than I ever have in the past. Mm. And I think it's because I know this is a biggie. Yeah. And it's not a big talk. Right. But it's a big moment talk. Ooh. And it's somewhere I've been wanting to be for years and years and years. And um, as we're recording this, I'm saying that as if it's coming up and by the time this plays, it will already be done. Yeah. But um, it is an amazing opportunity. And when I got it, I'm like, okay, this is what I've been looking for for five years to be on this particular stage. Wow. And typically I would start to get into, okay, this has got to be perfect. We got to do this. I go, here's the comedy. Here's the da, da, da. <laughs> and then I stopped my set and myself and said, first breathe. Yeah. which you and I are both been through. Uh, you're going through the deeper level of heroic public speaking than I went through, but that is one of the core elements of being a good speaker is learning to breathe. Yeah. And I think sometimes this is what happens to us as humans as we forget to breathe. Mm. And for you, as you went through those moments with losing your wife and, and finding yourself over the next two years, yeah, I can't even imagine how many times you just wanted to quit breathing because I've been there myself. It's like, this is not worth it. This is not worth taking that step to come out of the closet. This is not worth doing this. It's not worth losing my kids. It's not blah, blah, blah. So gosh, could I just, could somebody just turn off the breath and then it's done. Right. But, um, so this self care thing that you finally figured out, and I know it's like never a hundred percent figured out, but you no, no. figured out a huge amount of it. Yeah. Your wife has passed. Yeah. You're in this space. Yeah. You're in this headspace. When did you really start? I mean, what was that trigger that said, Oh my fucking God, I gotta start taking care of myself? It was it was that that point where, you know, like after the plane, right? Um, mm-hmm. and it was like that, like, what am I going to choose? Right. He said, What's my choice here? Because I was mm-hmm. in such a state where I had to choose to drink water. I mean, like, look, today I get thirsty and I drink water. Back right. then. I wasn't getting thirsty. I had to choose. And that was quite a revelation to me. Um, Most of our behavior, in fact, 99% of our behavior is based on unconscious habits and how we feel. Yep. If we feel it, we do it. Yep. Grief had obliterated my feelings. It was the only thing I felt. And Mm -hmm. I stopped drinking water. My habits just failed me. I wasn't eating. Yeah, you because know, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't sleeping yep. because I wasn't sleeping. My my grief was obliterating my feelings, and so consciously choosing um, was the 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 main thing. That, yep. that actually it was the only thing. And here's the magic: the magic is you always had that choice. I didn't want to lose Carol. In fact, I wish she was here every day. Of course. And the realization. I mean, I'm saddled with the guilt, saddled with the guilt of knowing that the very worst thing that could have ever happened to me is the very best. I am certainly alive today, eight years later, because Carol passed. You know, I weighed, I was smoking cigarettes, like Mm -hmm. like nobody's business. I weighed 330 pounds. I don't now. I weigh 185 pounds. I'm in the best shape of my life. Uh, And uh, and that, you know, that would not have been possible had not Carol given me the gift of her passing. And so, you know, here's was, something that's interesting, David. I guess I'm going to have to interrupt because this is so, it's, uh, it is ironic to me that you and I are having this conversation. Well, it's not ironic that we're having this conversation, but it's ironic that, that you're saying this because, and I'm, I'm grabbing my phone because 
just a few days ago, I put something in for this talk I'm getting ready to do. And it was this note. Mm. Without my divorce, I would not have had a chance or a hope or a possibility for a successful relationship. Yes. Yes. That's the one thing. Oh, well, not the one thing. <laughs> There's many things that happened because I went through that, but I realized how much walking out of that situation, yours is different, but very similar. Yes. Gave me the means that I needed to go experience what a real relationship was like. And it's very interesting to me because I interviewed a gal whose husband is still in denial that he's gay. Right. And one of the things that she said to me in the interview was when I figured this out for him, I went and had an affair hmm. and she said, and that was the first time I really knew what it was like to have good sex with a man. Right. Oh my goodness. So these, it's these interesting moments that so much of society wants to go, Ooh, I can't, you're such a son of a bitch. I can't believe you did that. I'm like, yes, I get that. I, I know this. Yeah. But then there's that other piece of it. But then when it's done and over, I, I released my wife to go have a happier life. Your wife released you yeah. to go find yourself nice. as tragic as it was. Right. And so for those who would love to throw, <laughs> throw you some shade because you say, wow, I'm in a better place than I've ever been because of Carol. Huge. Take that for the context that he's really saying it in. Huge gift. You, um, would, gi you would give anything, I bet, for her to be back here. Uh, yes. And um, the realization that I always had that choice is the main thing. And yes. like when I think about, like I was in, I was in a marriage, uh, not my marriage to Carol, another marriage mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for too long. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a situation where we were good in a lot of levels, but it wasn't, it was, it was a really great roommate situation in a lot of ways. And, yep. and that kind of, papered over all of the deeper issues of me, you know, really wanting a big love and a, and a big partnership and a big life. And it was never going to happen in a, a life that was fine. I mean, it was fine. Fine is feeling okay. And fine is my uh, canary in the coal mine. That's yep. like, Oh, something shitty and wrong. If it's fine and okay. That's, that's kind of like the white bread and the mayonnaise of life. Mm -hmm. That isn't where life happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, life happens at the edges and it happens in the magical places, the places that can bring you joy and happiness. Not that it's going to be like that all the time because there's going to be grief and sadness because that's what it is. It's that kind of over-medicated fine of, of um, self-soothing and, and diversion mm -hmm. that I feel like a lot of us live. I know I lived for a really long time. And so I had a very narrow view of what my life was. It was like I had a menu mm -hmm. with only one item on it and it was yep. rinse and repeat. Just do that over and over again. And it was hard for me to even imagine that there could be more things on that menu. And yet when I was brave enough to have the joy of change outweigh the pain of staying the same, yep. holy crap my world exploded and has been just on just now my life is about what's possible the cans and the wills and the do's it's mm -hmm. not about can't won't and don't it's about right. can will and do and that is magic it's expansive it is truly limitless and yeah i mean i'm going to be uh, also very honest in that i i i am a human being like everyone else i have not great times i have things that are like strife in my life and yeah. i also know how to get out out of it and get through it and get going on it and a lot of that has to do with the lessons that carol has given me and what i've done with that energy and what i've done with that direction and that now i feel like i am truly in the vocation that i was meant to be in and it is magic and mm -hmm. your listeners have that too. You have that. We all do have that. And it starts with one simple question. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Like, really, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Start with that. And then it goes from there. <laughs>
you know, I feel like I'm sitting here just listening to the speech I'm getting ready to give because you and I are on, you and I are on the very same wavelength as far as what we talk about. Because it's wisdom. Wisdom, it wisdom keeps on getting repeated. You're exactly. going to say it. I'm going to say it. Yep. People are going to hear it. And we're going to hear it over and over again because it's wisdom. It is. And the thing that I find so interesting is this choice piece because that's the third step in this speech that I'm doing. And I, I don't even like to call it a speech. It's this, this storytelling talk I'm going to give. That's I'm an interstitial between two. Actually, I kick off. I kick off the last set of keynotes at this particular conference, and then there's okay. two keynotes, and so I'm setting the tone because yeah. at this point in the conference, this is okay, bitches. We are taking you to the podium. <laughs> we are putting you into your shit because here we go. Get ready for the ride, right? Yeah, and. Um, so where I pretty much end up leaving them is here's where you, here's where you get to make the choice. Mm. Here's how you move beyond your fears and beyond your excuses. Mm. You have to give yourself permission. Yeah. You have to change your belief around that thing you say you can't do. Right. And then you have to choose to do it, but not only choose to do it, you get to choose how you want to do it your way. <laughs> you can take in and be the sponge and take in everybody else's yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But if that doesn't align with you, it's not going to work. No. I could have taken every bit of advice, and I did take some advice at times about coming out of the closet. Yeah. And when it didn't jive with me and I still tried to do it, it screwed me up. It screwed my family up. It almost cost me to lose my kids because of one guy that I thought, oh, wow, you know, he's hot, he's handsome, he's got a great dick, right. and I'm going to listen to him. Right. And I wish I hadn't. And I'm glad I didn't because, man, it came so close to me, like totally screwing up everything. Yikes. And to your point about this choice, 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 choice is in all of our power. Mm -hmm. And when Every we choose time. to take care of ourselves, and we choose to do the things and, and, and again, to the grief piece, yeah. we can all choose to move through grief or we can choose not to. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's easy. No. Doesn't mean it's not going to be painful. But this beautiful choice piece that you brought up, David, is just, well, it's kind of the bee's knees, so to speak. I like that. So for you, you may, you started realizing this, making this choice, the drinking the water. And so there's the magic pill. All you got to do, folks, is drink a ton of water and you'll lose 150 pounds. So, <laughs> <laughs> and if you believe us on that, let us send you our <laughs> subscription to our water that causes you to lose weight. So, um, it, yeah. <laughs> but it is part of the equation. It is. Um, it's very much part of the equation. So what started to happen then? I mean, you move through here, you start to see the light. It was, yes, it was definitely that choice of, of drinking water. Um, and that started the, the, that cascaded into all parts of my life. Uh, when you start, a, when you start small, start a really small change, it starts to feel good. And so you start doing it. Um, and, you know, like, look, I, I, most people's garages and basements and attics are full of big changes that people tried to make that didn't work out. I mean, like, mm -hmm. if they're, you know, how many people, maybe even you, possibly even me, have had uh, plenty of exercise equipments that, uh, that turn into, like, uh, clothing hangers, right? Yep. <laughs> um, and so those are, like, the big changes, right? Uh, but it's the small changes that begin to uh, create momentum, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so for me, it was a single sip of water that led to the, it was the drop that led to the river, that led to the stream, that led to the ocean, right? That was, that's, it kept building momentum to the point where it's like, okay, I need to move a little. You know, Joe had to pick me up. I had to move a little. Right. Um, and that movement started a journey of of getting into exercise and exercise in small ways right um the uh the eating a little meant i had some choices about what i was going to eat because i wasn't driven into different eating aspects by by emotions i didn't have them right mm -hmm. so starting to like make conscious choices about how i was eating uh, and so the the eating, the movement, uh, and uh, the the water, they they acted as a collection to kind of move forward uh, on 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 wanting to be different, wanting to live, and really learning that love of myself. Mm -hmm. And so, 
yeah, it's not overnight. It wasn't a light uh, a flip of a, a light switch. It was about building these habits over time and yeah. building it like a muscle, building it like any habit. I mean, if you or your kids have ever learned to uh, play an instrument, you know, the first few months were pretty excruciating, right? Yep. Yeah, right? Uh, you know, not, not, no bueno, not fun. Uh, and mm -hmm. it takes a while for those very conscious choices to become unconscious habits so that you go from uh, learning music to playing music. Mm -hmm. Or God, remember when you were first learning to drive a car, uh, you know, just like, ugh. I mean, it, it takes time yes, it uh, to go from, you know, white knuckle driving and having to remember everything to listening to the radio, talking on the phone, and not being quite sure how you got to your destination, and right. don't, don't, don't fucking do that. But you right, know that's exactly. that's what happens. But we do it. it we, it's but so we do. habitual, you know. And it, so it's. Um, I wish I could say that I would stand up here and here's the magic pill to get everything that you want in your life. But we started this part of this conversation with the exact right thing, which is like, what do you want, right? Mm -hmm. For my clients, often what they want is. Um, they spend way too much time in their job. Yep. Uh, they feel guilty about not spending any time with their family or those that they love. Yep. Uh, and they spend no time on themselves. None, right? Because that's the one place that they have agency. So they steal from that to spend a little bit of time with their family and they dump a whole lot into their vocation because that's where they're rewarded. It feels good, right? If we flip this frown upside down and flip the model and say, hey, look, you're going to focus on yourself. It's going to be self-care. And I, I think it's worth talking about what self-care is for a moment, but let's put a, pin in that. Yeah. put a pin in that for a second and just say, look, focus on yourself. Focus on your self-care because here's the magic. The magic, and we're going to say magic again. We're going to keep saying magic around here because, because it is, again, this wisdom. Uh, mm -hmm. The wisdom that gets on getting repeated because the, the ancient Sumerian, the, our oldest written language, which means that we've been talking about it for even longer. Our oldest written language, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, all of our ancient religious texts, they all talked about the importance of self-care. The mind, the body, the heart, the spirit. That's what these things are foundationally built on, right? Yeah. So let's pay attention to that. Let's pay attention to yourself, your mind, your body, your heart, and your spirit. Mm. And see how much you bring to, your, it just up levels your, your relationships like nobody's business. It up levels your vocation and how you show up in your community and how you show up ultimately at your legacy at large. I mean, like none of us are going to be at the end of this life and say, oh, thank God I spent all that fucking time at, the job, at my job. Mm -hmm. We are going to be at the end of this life and say, thank God I was loved and I loved others and I believe that it starts with loving yourself. Absolutely. It has to, because as soon as you don't, you can't love your job. You can't love others because it's being sucked up into hatred of other things. And the thing that I think that's hardest for many people. Yeah. And I was going to go the generational thing and I'm going to start there, but I'm going to back it in too. Sure. Is I know as a baby boomer, yep. my whole life was, you do for everybody else. You do for everybody else. And I look at my parents and I see that even deeper in their generation. And if you're doing something for yourself, you're selfish. Okay. And I think this is where we're kind of in a world now where you get through the Gen Xers, the millennials and the Gen Ys and whatever's next to come. And they're not as prone to don't do for yourself. Right but they're still trying to figure out, well, what exactly is real good self-care? They know how to do what they want and get what they want and go do things that's me, 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 which there's a balance there too, but it's like, I feel like there's almost this piece that's still missing out of, okay, well, how do you do this and do this well for yourself without being a complete ass wipe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I hear you. Um, Self-care. All right. This is what's, this is how, this is how I define self-care. This is what I keep on talking about as far as self-care goes. And it seems to work out. I, I would love to get feedback from, from your listeners as if it, this works out for them because it seems to work out for most people. There's a balance between, or there's a difference between what people believe is self-care and what is self-care. Mm -hmm. Uh, because self-care and self-soothing can get mixed up really easily. 
And Mm -hmm. the difference is that self-care nourishes your mind, your body, your heart, and your spirit. And self-soothing is that if you did a lot of it, yep, it's distracting or addicting, or sometimes both. Mm-hmm. And so, if you drop that lens on whatever the activity is, yep, then you know what you got something there. Mm-hmm. So, um, getting out in nature, mm-hmm. given that lens, which is it? Yep, I would say it's well, it could go both ways depending, but I see it more as self care. Exactly. Because, you know, getting out into nature, if you did a lot of it, is it addicting? Is it distracting? You know, you might be able to make that case for distracting. But what I'm talking about as far as distracting goes is you're ignoring something about your life or you're wanting to escape part of your life, right? Right. And and, and getting out into nature augments that it, it fills the heart or the spirit or the, yeah. the you know, it, 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 it nourishes that or so, um, uh, sh- uh, shopping, retail therapy. Yep. Definitely self-soothing, self-soothing. You do a lot of it, you know, that's, that's distraction or even addicting. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, I, spending time with friends, that might be distracting, but really that, that is usually so much more about, you know, fulfilling your heart and your soul. Right. Um, so like that's, if you start with that kind of lens, then, then you naturally get to things that are so much more fulfilling in your life. Like, look, sleep. I'm telling you, one of the things that I work on mostly with my clients is, uh, the most with the clients is sleep. And, and I, it seems like it's gotten very popular in the last few years with, you know, um, Ariana Huffington and a few different right. you know, high profile books. Well, you know what? Sleep is so fundamental to like how we lose weight, emotional regulation, um, uh, hormonal balance, living longer. Like it has so many different pieces and mind you, uh, if you have poor sleep, you don't particularly make good decisions. I know when yep. I'm tired, you know, it's like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to um, uh, make any good for me food. I, what nope. I want is to have something delivered, you know, or exactly. whatever, right. You know, yep. or, or just go out or, right. so I'm not going to make the wisest choices because uh, I'm tired. So fix your sleep. You know, that's magic self-care. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the difference between self-soothing and self-care. It's like, look, binge watching a show with a pint of ice cream. Look, I'm not going to knock it. You know, the pint of Ben and Jerry's in my, in my, my trash can right now is a testament to self-soothing is fun and good and necessary, Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not self, self, it's not self-care. So just just separate those two things. It's, it's um, two different things. Yep. And I think it's that beautiful space of realizing everything in moderation. And I'm not saying moderate self-care because to me, I think we're already a society that's over-moderating self-care and we're doing everything else but taking care of ourselves. Right. Yes. I think we're very much a society who is into full-on, let's self-soothe by the next social media post is about soothing how good I am, what I'm doing, and then I'm drinking. And again, I'm I'm raising my hands here, folks. You guys all know I'm a big wine drinker. But I've even seen that for me personally. As I'm saying this, I'm like, yeah, I just signed up for another wine club this past weekend. But um, (laughs) I have seen it really diminish. I remember at one point when my husband and I, we could knock down a couple of bottles of wine an evening on the weekends. Yep. And now I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll have a glass or two and I'm good. Done. I don't need it. Right. But I think it's also where you get to in your stations of life. And I do mean stations, folks. I'm talking there's lots of different stations we get to. I'm in a station of life right now where I'm awake. I'm not saying I'm completely woke. (laughs) I'm just much more awake. Yeah. And literally some of it's because I sleep better. Mm. And literally some of it's because I I have a desire to go to the gym. I have a desire to eat healthy. I have a desire to make my business successful. I have a desire to try to be as good as I can in my relationship. I'm woke to all these things. Mm. And part of that is because I'm taking care of myself. And for so many people who are listening to this podcast, and I think this is a really great place to kind of bring it full circle. You cannot make a bold move. You cannot face your fears. You cannot stop making excuses for your life. And you sure the hell can't stop apologizing for how you live if you're not invoking a deep, deep intentional mission of self-care. 
And that's what David's all about. And that's what he teaches. And that's what he breathes. That's what he's a walking testimony to. And that's why I so badly wanted him to come and speak. Plus, I really kind of like the guy too. So <laughs> the little bit that we know each other, I mean, don't really know each other all that well. We were, we all run in some similar circles and yeah, all that good stuff. But um, so as we wrap it up here, David, what would be one thing you'd encourage people who are like, okay, this sounds really good. So let me add self-care to my lit today's to-do list. <laughs> I love the small step because that's what I talk about all the time is like, okay, yes, coming out of the closet. That's a big, hairy, audacious step to go do. But the big one. what is one small step today you can take towards believing you can actually come out of the closet? So I guess I'm throwing to you, what's a, what's a way you could encourage someone to take that small step towards self-care? One of the bigger challenges that, that um, I hear over and over again, and it was a big challenge for me, was um, adding um, mindfulness to my life. Mm. And yet that's one of those foundational things that, you know, if you, if you, if you do it, you know, like it has, I mean, like it's a dessert topping and a floor wax. It has so many good, like there's no downside. There's no downside. Like the, just the creativity and the uh, emotional regulation, the, uh, the, the innate happiness, the focus, the creativity. I mean, just so many different things that go with mindfulness. Yet yeah. it's one of those things that people are like, huh, that's hard. <laughs> And it's like, I'll try the apps, I'll try this, I'll listen to, I'll go to the, and like, like it just doesn't seem to stick. I'm like, I know, I got it. Um, mm -hmm. that, that happens over and over again. I was at a, um, uh, a uh, business mindfulness course, and it, there are such things as a business mindfulness course. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they, they taught us um, a loving kindness meditation. Mm -hmm. And a loving kindness meditation is one where it keeps you in the present, the here and the now, uh, by, uh, in your head, you just wish people well, wish people well, wishing you well, wish you well. And I thought, ah, oh, I'm going to do that. That's, that's, that's awesome. And so I get off the Metro in Washington, DC, and I'm wishing hundreds of people well. And I do the <laughs> same thing on the way home, wishing hundreds of people well. And I get, I get to the end of the day and I thought, you know what? That just, it didn't do anything for me. I'm like, eh, you know, like, I don't think that's going to stick. All right. But I woke up, you know how sometimes you have to sleep on things. Mm -hmm. I woke up and I went like, ah. Oh, revelation. I have a revelation. I realized that I can wish anything on people. And I decided that I was going to wish people things in my life that I wanted. Mm. So I did the exact same thing. I got off the Metro in Washington, DC, and I wished hundreds of people a great sex life. Mm. <laughs> It, see, and that's what did it for me because it was amusing to me. It had feelings. Yes. And, and it put a little bit of a smile on my face because it was amusing and it's something that I did want and magic because it would catch somebody else's eye and you could see it go through the crowd. It was a network effect. Hmm. So this is my challenge and this is my request for your listeners. The smallest bit of self-care that I could imagine would be the one second it takes to wish someone well or a great sex life, or something that's meaningful to you. I wish people in my head a long battery life on their phone, or great Wi-Fi signal, or short lines at the grocery store, because these are things I want, and I want for you. So my um, smallest bit of self-care I can, I can ask for your listeners is to just um, wish somebody something awesome for them. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It's so true. Such a beautiful way to do this. In fact, it's interesting um, <clears throat> that you bring that up because a few years ago when Oprah was doing her Oprah weekend tours all over the country, I had the privilege of going to one in San Jose. Mm. And the fir really, I think the first exercise we did on day one was so powerful because she had us think about somebody, somebody we cared about, maybe somebody we had a challenge with. Yeah. But get somebody in our mind. And really think about what you want most for them. Hmm. And Deepak Chopra was kind of leading this meditation and had us do that. And then when we came out of the meditation of thinking about what we want for these, this person, <clears throat> we were to write those things down. And so here we are, 10,000 people in a huge arena, you know, all doing this work together. And first of all, just the energy from that was like, you know, I was already getting like, like just tingly going, wow, we're all doing this at the same time. And hmm. You know, usually there's like hockey games, <laughs> all this stuff happening here, but here we just meditated together. You know, it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And then after he did that, 
Oprah and only the way Oprah can do it. <laughs> she said, I really want you to look at that list that you just made. Mm. Because whatever you wish for that person is exactly the same things that you wish for yourself. <laughs> and it was like, boom, mic drop. <laughs> there you go. And I'm like, okay, we are in the house with mama. Here we go. You know? <laughs> and I have, so a little confession, I, Oprah, I use that a lot with my clients because mm -hmm. it's a very powerful exercise. And it's basically the same thing you just said is when you can wish somebody else something that you would yeah. want for yourself. Yeah. It's really fucking hard to hate on them. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what self-care is all about. It's putting yourself in that space where you love on yourself enough to do the thing you most want for yourself. And then the magic is it flips around mm -hmm. and you can actually wish that for somebody else. So, so David and I could like stay on y'all can <laughs> just kind of continue to hang out with us here for the next five hours. And this yep. will be the longest podcast in history, but um, <laughs> love this conversation, man. This has been amazing and powerful and enjoyable. Thank you for being you and sharing your story and thank you for going and doing the work. Mm. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Um, and I, it's, it's, it, you know, it sounds almost hokey in my head, but it's really been an honor and privilege to be on your show and to really um, talk about how uh, serving others really starts with serving yourself. No matter what the challenge is. No matter what the challenge is. Hey, 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 Life Uncloseted family. Another episode of Life Uncloseted has come to an end and it is time for all of us to sashay away and go face our fears, make those bold moves, and stand up to living our life without apology. But before you do, I've got a favor to ask of you. Would you hop over to iTunes or Spotify or Podbean or wherever it is that you're listening to this and just give us a little bit of love if you like what we're doing here at Life on Closet. Here's what it does. It helps other people find the show. It helps other people get to know what we're all about. And you just might help change your life. In fact, if you really want to change your life, We'd love it if you just ask a friend to take a listen and see what they think. So that's it. Love you all deeply. I'm Rick Clemens, the host of Life Uncloseted, and never stop stepping out, stepping up, and stepping in to living your life uncloseted.